Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We appreciate you joining us here today. We've got another little video for you here. Today we're going to be talking about the CZ P07. CZ's been making good pistols for a long time and I've never myself really spent a lot of time looking at the CZ line. Um, I've got a chance to shoot a couple in the past and I didn't have a lot of interest. I don't really know why I've looked at them in the display case and I've held them and I've tried the triggers and I thought they were interesting. But here recently, I was able to shoot the CZ P07 and after spending some time with it and really looking at how the gun is made and how well it operates, I can say that it's an extremely capable concealed carry pistol. And we're going to talk about why in just a second. All right, everybody, let's get right to it. Before we get too much going, I would like to take a second to just uh, ask, you know, if this is your first time uh, coming to the channel, or if you come to the channel and you haven't already done so, would you please take a minute to subscribe for us? If you look in the lower right-hand portion of your computer screen there, you've got a little subscribe icon. If you're on a mobile device, you can, you know, scroll down and hit the uh, subscribe button there and hit the bell icon so you'll know whenever we make a new video. It helps us a lot, and we really appreciate it. So, what do we got on deck today? CZ P07. Well, like I said, I hadn't had a lot of experience with CZ. I don't know why. No, no particular reasons. I didn't dislike CZ. I just hadn't really got into it. It's like anything else. There's a lot of, you know, products out there. You have to kind of get around to them. And um, I put some thought into doing a video on the CZ here, and then I actually found out that a friend had this exact pistol. I was able to go shoot the gun and spend some time with it. And uh, so now we can really have a good discussion about it. Uh, I want to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing this beautiful brand new CZ P07 for us so we can do a nice tabletop review and let you guys really see what it's all about. So we thank them once again. All right, so what do we got here? Let's just look at some of the overall, you know, general information about the gun. I always like to start with a little bit of history. Um, the P07 was actually introduced in 2009. Um, it looked a little bit different then. And in 2014, they had the facelift. You know, they made some changes to the gun. And some of those things that they changed, um, they added uh, slide serrations on the front. Um, they changed the grip to where you have these removable back straps and you probably see this on a lot of guns now this one comes with the small one installed but they give you two others they give you a medium and a large if you want to change it out and uh, you know some people like doing that I normally put a larger back strap on my gun but because I have a big hand but I found that even with the small one that it came with the gun was very comfortable so I didn't make any changes myself um, looking around, you also had, um, another change to the second gen is the sights. The original came with plastic sights, which were not all that well received. And for the new version, they have metal, um, three dot sights. And these are actually glow sights. Um, I've had some experience with these. The first time I ever had a pair of these was on, uh, uh my HK P30 SK. And it's kind of interesting, but, um, you know, they, they have their use. And I'll show you what they look like a little later on in the video. And then uh, the trigger. Um, they have a trigger system, what they call the Omega double action, single action trigger. All right. So the first thing that I always like to do is um, do a little side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, you know, this is a compact pistol. So let's look at it compared to some other compact pistols. And, of course, we have to start with something you're all familiar with, or most people anyway, and that's a Glock 19. So, as you can see, just looking at the two guns, they're very close in size. Obviously, they're not exactly the same, but if you look at them, you know, side by side, look at the, the width, the length of the gun, the 
If you look down and look at the slides, you know, there's some slight differences. The grip's a little bigger on the CZ, you know, small differences. And the same thing if I use the HK USB here. Very similar in size, but they're not exactly the same. Um, one thing, this has a larger trigger guard, which is a lot more like, you know, what HK does. I like that. We'll get into that more when we talk about the external features. But just looking at these two side by side, once again, you know, they're very close. So you're always going to have little differences between the guns. We all get that. But when you're trying to determine, you know, how comfortable this gun might be for you to carry, it's good to know how it compares to some stuff that you may have already carried, something you've already got. So I think we can all agree on that. So, um, oh, and talking about that, the, uh, the weight of the gun is um, reported at 27.7 ounces. Now, this is for the 9mm version. Uh, there's also a 40 caliber version. Um, this is a 15 plus 1 capacity weapon, unless you decide to take extra steps. Um, CZ is good enough to provide you with mag extensions two round extensions you've got one for each mag it comes with two magazines and so if you want to turn your magazines into 17 rounders well you can do that and further your capacity even more so that's pretty nice right out of the box once again you've got the two back straps so you can either go 15 plus one or 17 plus one but the weight of the gun is pretty reasonable when you compare it to the other compacts. So it's a lot like carrying a Glock 19 or a USP or there's some other SIGs in the same uh, category. It feels about the same as my uh, M11A1. So these are all similar size type guns. Alright, so let's talk about the features. So, as we look at the CZP07 here, um, there are some interesting features about the gun, and um, the very first thing I want to draw your attention to, I don't know if you noticed whenever we were doing our side-by-side -side comparison, I'll show it to you again, but you may notice that you seem to have a lot more slide on the Glock than you do on the CZ. You know, more frame, less slide, more slide, less frame. But if you look at it, there's a reason why it appears that way. If you look at the slide, you'll see that it actually goes inside the frame. Pieces come down on each side and they actually fit into these notches that run along uh, the frame on the CZ, which is a little bit different. Looking at your Glock here, if you take a look, you see the slide notches are on the outside, so it rides on the outside of the frame. And that's the same thing that we're talking about when we look at our HK USP. If you look right there, you'll see that the slide, you know, goes on the outside and moves along the tracks that stick out from the frame. So it's interesting um, that they've engineered the weapon this way. And as it turns out, there are some advantages to this. Um, having this material and having this lower profile, it gives you a lower bore axis on the gun. And the gun actually um, has some good shooting characteristics because of it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when I discuss uh, the range performance. But so you've got the slide inside the frame. And of course, we mentioned our glow sights here. And um, I'll show you what those look like uh, a little further down. You got your takedown lever. Uh, this will come into play whenever we talk about the uh, disassembly here in a minute. And then, of course, you got your standard magazine release on the side. You've got your trigger guard. It's a nice oversized trigger guard. Like I say, it's very similar, um, in my opinion, to what HK does. And I like that, personally. Uh, and it may be biased because I've got big hands, but I like having plenty of room to get my finger in there. I hate a small trigger guard where I feel like I've got to work to get it in there. Um, 
And then, of course, right here. Now, this is interesting. So we got to talk about a couple of things when we talk about this. So this is your decocker. This can also be configured as a manual safety, but it's either or. And that's kind of strange. There's, you know, other guns like my HKs where it can serve as both. On this one, it's going to be one or the other. Um, but they give you the pieces to change this out to a safety instead of a decocker. So, action. We're talking double action, single action. Now, the reason why um, I don't take issue with these being two separate uh, pieces that you can't do both because I'm not a real big fan of manual safeties on my double action, single action guns. I get it. Uh, 1911, I carry you know uh, safety on it. I get it. If it's something where you have to carry it cocked and locked in order to use it, to me, a manual safety makes sense. I'd rather have the ability to pull this out of the holster, go to single action if, if, if there's a threat, and then, of course, if you de-escalate, you can just hit your decocker and the weapon's safe. Um, and, of course, if you just pull from the holster and you go with the whole double action trigger pull, well, you've got that eight pounds to go through. Now... I feel like if you have a double action trigger pull that's that heavy, you know, eight pounds, nine pounds, 10 pounds, which is very common for your double action trigger pull on these guns. I just don't feel like I'm going to accidentally pull through eight pounds of trigger pull. And because of that, I feel safe with this configuration, you know, rather than having a manual safety. But that's just me. So you've got your serrations, you've got your you know, stippling type serrations in the plastic here of the frame. You've got, you know, stippling on the front and on the front of the trigger guard. You've got all over here. And so you've got very aggressive patterns all over the gun, the body of the gun. So when you're holding it, um, you've really got something to hang on to. This part's done really, really well. And uh, it's got a nice beaver tail here to keep the meat of your hand clear. And um, it does have a lanyard hole there if you use those kinds of things. And, of course, it has an accessory rail on the front. So if you want to mount a light on it, you've got the ability to do that, too. So that's your basic overview on the features for the CZ P07. All right. So now let's talk about something that's always going to be important with a, a gun that you carry. Obviously... No matter what kind of gun you carry, um, it seems reasonable that you're going to spend some time shooting it to make sure you're proficient. And of course, if you shoot your gun, you need to clean your gun. So let's talk about the um, field strip disassembly procedure here for the uh, CZ P07. Um, if you're used to Glocks or SIGs, HKs, you know you got a, a, a variety of different ways these come apart. You know, on the Glocks, you've got little tabs you pull down here you know you pull slide back and then you use those little tabs to release on an HK you know, you've got a mark that you line up your takedown lever with and it comes out a lot of SIGs are that way as well um, this thing is a little bit different so the first thing we got to do is we got to take our magazine out no problem there we got it out and then if you look real carefully, you'll see a mark here on the frame. And if you look up into the left here above it, there's another mark there on the slide. So you got this one and this one. Well, you have to line these two up by pulling back on the frame. So, so if we do this just like that, and you look, you'll see we've got those two marks lined up. And then once you do that, you know, keep pressure on the frame. And then you go to the other side here, and this is the other side of your takedown lever. Just take something non-marking, you know, edge of a magazine, and I usually have a Sharpie or something handy, and just push on that button right there. Then you go to the other side, you've got something to grab on now, and you can just grab this takedown lever and just pull it right on out. See, just easy as pie. So it's out of there. Once you get that takedown lever out, take the slide and just go straight forward and take the whole thing off. So now we've got what you're used to seeing here. We've got our slide. We've got our 
um, recoil spring and rod and of course we got our barrel so obviously we just push this off and get that out of there the barrel you just fish that right out and then you're disassembled just like that so while we've got it apart let's take a closer look at a couple of things here you know we were talking about how the slide rides inside the frame and you can really see it this way looking at the grooves in the slide and see how it's engineered to go in there so it's pretty interesting and you know there's a quite a bit of metal below what you can see on the frame and that's what's giving it that low bore axis and uh, it's a very interesting design and like i say once again it works very well and we'll talk about that here in a minute so let me put these pieces back in obviously your barrel you just have to work that back in like that now on this recoil spring You've got the, see where the button here is a little bit smaller than the spring. And then on this side, the button completely covers the spring. The small button goes to the front, okay? So just stick that in there like that. And then just push that right into place. And then that's done. Now, before we stick this back on, I just wanted to show you, you know, the insides here, you know, oiling points. If you do have this apart, you want to make sure that when you, uh, get ready to put it back together that you you want to make sure you put a little bit of oil you know on the rail you want to put a little bit in the trigger assembly not a lot you don't want oil just running out of it but these are places that you want to get a little bit of oil on to make sure that the weapon functions correctly and you can see this is the that decocker assembly okay and this where it comes out because you can change this out with that manual safety if you want to do it so that's what it looks like if you decide to do that so to put it back on, obviously you just need to line it back up with the notches inside the frame there. And then you just come all the way back. Okay, so once you have it to this point, you're gonna take your takedown lever and you're gonna put it back in place here. Now, remember we talked about these notches earlier? There's the one and then there's the other. So you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna have to push this thing to where you've got those aligned and then take your takedown lever here push it in and when you go in it's going to take a little bit of effort so really push it you know if you just feel a little bit of resistance and you stop that's not going to do you got to really push that thing and now we're reassembled I actually had a, a buddy call me up who just recently got this pistol and he thought he broke it because he was trying to put the takedown lever back in and he had a lot of resistance and he didn't want to break the gun. And um, I told him, look, I, I'd gone through the same thing, but it just really does take a lot of force to actually get that back in. And it gets easier over time, obviously, you know, the parts get to know each other a little bit better, but it is a bit stiff at first. So, but that's all there is to the take down your field strip there and your reassembly as you can see it really doesn't take longer than any of your other common compact pistols so not bad all right so let's talk about the range so like i say i was fortunate to get my hands on this thing and take it to the range and um in doing so made a few observations the probably my favorite compact pistol and i've got some subcompacts that are my absolute favorites but probably my favorite compact pistol um is the usp hk um i love the trigger good follow-up shots um, just a really manageable gun i was very surprised to find that the po7 actually has less recoil or at least it seemed to me like it had a much more manageable recoil than my USP did. Um, I believe that lower bore axis, you know, is really making a big difference on how well this thing shoots. Um, and another interesting note on that, now we're talking, you know, putting a couple of hundred rounds through the gun. Usually that's how I'll break one in is to, you know, shoot a few boxes and really let the parts get to know each other and then by the time i've done that i'm usually doing pretty good and right out of the you know right out of the gate having never shot this gun before i was shooting very respectable groups but that's not even the part that impressed me the most you know 
I hear people all the time that uh, are trying to help other people pick out guns, especially um, females. And I don't know why, because females are completely capable of picking out their own guns just by doing the same thing anybody else does, and that is go to the range. Any conversation about picking a concealed carry gun that doesn't begin with go to the range and try them is the wrong conversation. So ladies, if somebody tells you something different than that, they're not helping you. So go to the range and shoot some stuff. Well, at the range, there's a lot of different guns being shot. Um, there was a CZP-07, and there's a lot of interest around the gun, and a lot of people were shooting it, including some females and some new shooters, and one female that had some really serious hand issues, uh, strength issues, and she was worried about shooting this gun because her Glock 19 was a little uncomfortable for her. And she did a really good job shooting this P07. Uh, the recoil was very manageable for her as a smaller person with weak hands. Um, she still had a little bit of difficulty, you know, articulating the slide because it is, you know, a pretty healthy operation to move the slide. And it's not that bad for me, but for her, you know, it was something. But she's still perfectly comfortable with the gun. And uh, she's able to use it both in the double action trigger and single action trigger. And her shot groups were very good. Um, my experience was the um, sight system. Like I say, it's just a basic three dot sight. And normally I would pick on that. Um, this is a glow sight, three dot sight, like I said. But uh, Normally, I would pick on basic sights as not being all that great, but you know, this three dot sight system worked really well. I had a, a, a good time shooting this gun. And um, after shooting a couple hundred rounds through it, um, I don't care what kind of gun you're shooting, by that time, your hand is usually giving you some feedback, you know, from all the smacking around. And this did not feel any worse than spending an afternoon shooting a Glock or spending an afternoon shooting the HK. As a matter of fact, it might have been a little bit better. So I was pretty impressed with the PO7's shooting capabilities. And not just for me, but what I saw with other people with different levels of experience and concerns were able to shoot this firearm. So overall, really excellent shooting gun. Well, I promised I'd show you what these uh, glow sights look like. So let's check this out. So... Taking the pistol, we're in fairly dark conditions here. Looking around, you can barely see, can barely even get it to focus on the white dot there. It is a steel sight that has the glow part on it there. But if you hit it with a light for just a second, you end up with glowing sights as you can see all right so what's it like to carry the cz p07 well i'll tell you i've got a couple of ways that i tend to carry every gun and and once again this is just me but i tend to break guns up into two categories summer guns and winter guns and if I've got the ability to wear more clothing, you know, if I'm wearing jeans and I have a t-shirt and an outer shirt, that type of thing, I'll carry a compact gun like this or a 19 or a USP because I feel like I've got enough room to, to you know, hide the weapon correctly. Um, if I'm wearing shorts or if I'm in a lot of lighter clothing, if I have any doubts at all, I, I'll tend to pocket carry, you know, something like a baby Glock or a little Micro 9 or something like that. Um, you know, SIG 365, any of those guns that can easily you know, go into your pocket or go in the waistband and not really show at all. So for this one, just to say I did it, I actually did carry this one in a sticky just to see. And to me, I can do it. And if I don't have to move quickly, I can comfortably carry this gun in a sticky. But I really don't recommend it because the gun's, you know, heavier. And um, I'm not that comfortable carrying... A heavier gun in a sticky because the minute you get moving the gun can start to move around on you um, I was very comfortable carrying this weapon in a crossbreed holster um, you know you got your kydex you got a little bit of retention there and you've got your leather and the leather you know keeps the 
beaver tail and the sights and the edge of the gun from digging into my side. And, you know, you got to remember this gun when it's fully loaded, you know, it's pretty heavy. You know, it's like the locker and HK. You're talking about 15 plus one capacity. And if you went with the mag extensions, it could be 17 plus one. But the gun's pretty heavy. I was able to manage carrying this gun all day long, um, you know, sitting down, watching TV. Wasn't a problem carrying it. Uh, after a full day, there was no problem whatsoever. All right. So overall, you know, I'll say that I wasn't really looking at CZ that hard. I've shot a few CZs in the past that, uh, you know, friends have had the range. And I've looked at them a lot, you know. I've gone in the stores and there's all kinds of different editions, you know, and 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 there's some really good looking pistols and the triggers, you know, are really good on them, but I never really spent any time, never really seriously considered a CZ until I shot this pistol. And now that I've spent some time with it and I have got to know this gun a little bit better, I've got to say that I can really see some, you know, genius in the way this gun is designed. Um, the lower bore axis shoots very well. The gun's very well made. You know, the build quality on the gun is really good. Um, no failures. You know, the time I had at the range, no, no failures to feed or failures to eject. And I used a variety of ammo. I always use a combination of, you know, different hollow points and different range ammo just to see what they'll do. And so far, it's been really good. Like I say, it's not a small gun. Um, it's a typical compact pistol, and with the mag, you know, loaded magazine in the gun, it's going to be a little bit of weight on your side. But with the right holster, you know, crossbreed, alien wear, any any holster that has good retention, um, you know, a, a good carry belt, that's a big part of it too. You know, you can have a, a, a good gun and a good holster and a bad belt, and it makes a, a world of difference. So make sure you got a good stiff belt that can really hold the holster. And if you do that, the gun carries really well, and it's not uncomfortable at all. So I can say that the CZ P07 is an extremely capable concealed carry gun. And if you've been wondering about it, if you've had questions about it, it's okay to look at it. Um, I can't find anything wrong with this gun at this point. And I'm going to keep experimenting with it and, and, you know, see where it goes from there. But so far, so good. Once again, we appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, join us. And, you know, once again, if it's first time here if you ha or you just haven't done it yet, please subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Uh, we're going to continue to give you the best content that we possibly can. Make sure you, you can drop us a comment or an email if there's something you want to see or something you want to discuss. Uh, we try to base our videos on what you want as much as we can. So let us know. Um, we appreciate it once again. Everyone be careful out there. And we'll be back soon with another video. Thanks a lot.